Hi, my name is Tom Sabo, and I'm going to create this video this morning to show you how to clean your MyOps splash unit. And this is the latest generation by MyOps. And you can tell that because there is the retaining screw that holds the control unit to the valve body. Another way is they redesigned the packaging for this unit. And you can see the MyOps logo here. And it's a rather nice carton. And that's a, I was surprised to see that when it, when it arrived. What prompted me to do this was I saw on a number of discussion boards and videos on how to disassemble and clean the unit. And those came about because after a period of non-use, the unit simply didn't work. And if you think about that, inside the reservoir, you're using water that may have components such as xanthan gum, milk, food coloring, and all of those can get inside of the valve body itself or the valve components and may cause them to seize up. So when that happens, your unit doesn't work, you're forced to tear it apart anyways. This new unit comes apart and cleans very easily. So I'm going to walk you through that now. What's needed is a Phillips screwdriver and a regular flat blade screwdriver. So to go through this process, I'll show you how this works. So we're going to flip the unit over, get to the, to the screw that holds the valve body to the control unit unscrew that. The screw is captive, meaning it won't fall out of the, the control unit. So you should be able to feel that that's ready to come apart. Simply pull the two pieces apart and uh, now the valve body is removed from the control, control unit. You can now disassemble or remove the reservoir from the valve body. All right, here we go. Using the Phillips screwdriver, you can now remove the two screws that hold the retaining plate in place. These are small screws and they're short. So be careful because they're, they're easy Simply, they're easy to lose. All right, let's get the second screw loose. We're going to remove the plate. And I'm going to set this off to the side in a way that I don't lose the two screws. Now this plunger can be removed from the valve body. And you can see that there's just, there's two pieces. There's an O-ring there to seal. And the steel part just simply slides in the brass sleeve and that's it. So the spring is held fairly captive on there. So uh, be careful, but you shouldn't have too much, to, uh, it shouldn't be too, too easy to lose. I'm just gonna rinse these with some tap water and I'm here in my kitchen. All right. There we go. I'll use a paper towel here. Place them down, let them drain off. The valve body itself, you can see there are two insert molded threaded unit, threaded sleeves, they're molded right into the valve body and they're made of brass, so they should stand up well. Now this valve body 
can be uh, can be rinsed out. And what you'll notice is, or what when you do this, you'll notice that when a stream of water comes in through from the reservoir port, it'll exit in the plunger port. If you run the water into the plunger port, then it'll exit out of the nozzle. So I'm just gonna rinse this out now. There are no loose pieces in here that you have to worry about washing down the drain. So just, uh, just give that a nice, nice rinsing. All right. Now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to dry my hands. And now we're going to put the valve, we're going to put the unit back together. So simply reverse the process, slide the plunger into the brass sleeve. You can see how it very, moves very freely in there, and that's what you want. Slide this back into the valve body, and that little O-ring that's in there will help retain the brass portion against the, uh, the valve body so it doesn't spring loose. And then carefully find that plate, retaining plate, slide it over the brass sleeve and run the screws back in. And just snug those up finger tight. You don't want to over tighten them and run the risk of pulling those those brass threaded inserts out of the valve body. And so just snug them up. Now you can insert the valve body into the control unit, like so. And I'm going to Screw that together. And again, just, just snug that screw up, finger tight. Don't, you don't have to overdo it. I'm just gonna simply wipe down the reservoir. And it now gets threaded back into the valve body. Now that's a plastic thread, male thread going into a plastic female thread. So you don't, you just want to let that seat against the valve body and you don't need to over tighten that either. And then there you go. So I've just decided to make this cleaning process part of my, uh, part of my shooting. And after I'm done with my shooting session, I just bring the unit up here into the kitchen and uh, pull it apart real quick, break it down, rinse everything out, and then put it all back together for storage. That way, if it sits on the sits in my, my case for uh, a week, two weeks, four weeks, what have you, then then I, I I'm pretty confident it's going to be ready to go. I have noticed that once you set the unit up and fill the reservoir. You may need to dry cycle the unit uh, maybe a half a dozen times or so, so that you get the liquid from the reservoir down in through the valve body and to start to exit the nozzle. And uh, once, you, once you start to see that you're getting drops out of the nozzle, then you're good to go. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if you, uh, if you have any questions or comments, I'll include my email address in with this, this video and, uh, by all means, give me a holler. Thanks a lot and happy shooting.